Okay, we're recording. Okay, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 97 of the Security Podcast on the In30 Network. And before we start, Tom doesn't even know about this. Did you see the podcast map? It's a map of all the podcasts. Are we right in the middle? Are we the biggest island? Of course, no. Of course, we're not even on the island. Like, we're, we're off on some... So you have Leo Laporte and you have the big guys, Dan Benjamin and the, and the relay people. And there's all these, uh, there are all these, all these charts and everything else. And I said, I emailed the guy, I said, there's an error. You didn't put in 30 on this. We definitely need to be there. And I definitely want to double hour to two different shows. But anyway, episode 97, Tom's here. And we just have a whole bunch of news. But I, if you want a theme, you want something to get behind, we're really talking about messengers. We have a couple big messenger stories. And I figure, I mean, we didn't talk about it in 15 episodes. That means we got to talk about how we message people again for the billionth time over here. But always. We're gonna do it. There's always a new thing. So we have to go from there. So you want to start us off with something? We have a whole bunch of stories. Yes. Uh, the first thing I want to start out with is, um, oh, PGP. Oh. So so today I had the wonderful opportunity of, uh, of using the great open PGP implementation, GPG. And while I love Werner, I love GPG. I love the program. I love what it does. I love that it's free. It's one of the most important pieces of technology we have around today. But it is a usability train wreck. And I don't know, I, I really don't think there's any way to make PGP usable. It is just awful. We, we literally spent a little while diagnosing, uh, you know, key, like there was a public key, but it wasn't the one I had because he had changed it and there was a lot of conflict. And then even when we got that straightened out, there was a caching issue with some agent in one program holding on to the old keychain and not updating the new key. So it literally took uh, like 45 minutes to an hour to send a simple message to convey some information back and forth. It was just awful. So that brings us to Threema. And we talked about Threema a long time ago. Uh, it was actually um, one of our recommended applications despite it not being open source. Uh, it's pretty usable. I wouldn't say it's the easiest thing in the world, but it's definitely more usable than PGP uh, or the other kind of hardcore encryption applications out there. Well, the reason we said it is because, like we always say, we listen to uh, Steve Gibson and Security Now on the Twit Network. And and while that's an awesome show, and when you have when you have the time to listen to it, it's fully recommended, and they go way in depth more than we would. I mean, it was almost Steve Gibson's full time job to make an excellent two hour podcast every week. And for yeah. the most part, it is there's there's a lot of dead space on different other topics, but the security is there, the questions are excellent, the answers are great, so we do recommend it. He initially recommended it. And and he did get some heat. It's not open source, this and that. But he said they said he looked through the, the the documentation. They were upfront with him. They explained it to him. They did all this other stuff. And he 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 test drove it and he gave it a thumbs up. So so at some point they're looking to audit and they finally got audited. And we have the results. I put it we'll put it in the show notes. But basically everything is great. They, they, they didn't lie about anything. There's no, the, everything was provided to the auditors. Everything looks good. So Th Threema is, is really a great app uh, if you want to get started with, um, you know, point-to-point -point communication that's fairly easy to get people into. Uh, the Really, the biggest downside to this, and you'll see this with most of the encrypted messengers out there, uh, is... There's no way to get it on the desktop, um, at least not yet. Uh, you know, like when you're using something like Hangouts or iMessage or, you know, AOL Instant Messenger, or whatever you choose to use to contact people or, or Skype, um, you know, you, you've got stuff on your phone. There's usually a web version somewhere. And then a lot of the times you've either got a browser plugin that runs locally or you've got some sort of application that runs in your machine to 
make chatting with people easier, more persistent, or what have you. Just it's a better experience. Threema doesn't have that. Uh, this audit does prove that they've got the security chops. Uh, they're still not open source, which kind of bugs me, but uh, it does remain a valid option if you want a secure encrypted messaging platform. Well, <clears throat> the problem is, and we go back to this, is that same with PGP, is that people want, will you end up using the built-in chat protocol and in every phone it is SMS. And if you're outside the US, you're gonna say SMS, I thought that died 10 years ago. Yeah, the US is about 10 years behind. And we're slowly moving to other platforms like WhatsApp and other various, and Hangouts and iMessage. But for the most part, even when people say use iMessage, they don't know whether they're using iMessage or not. And, and they end up reverting back to SMS. And in the United States, SMS is the big deal. But slowly but surely, we're moving away. And the debate is, where are they moving to? Getting people to pay $1.99, which is what Threema costs, unfortunately, is never going to happen. It's going to be for the one-off groups. This is Threema is going to be in your messaging folder, and like, and that's how you're going to communicate pe with people securely. Th which is sad because it it looks good. It it really does look spiffy. It does everything you want a messaging app to do. It just costs money, and even free doesn't work. I mean, if uh, I mean you have uh, what's it called iMessage, you have Hangouts. People don't use Hangouts. Android people use Hangouts, but iPhone people don't, and and there's battles and everything else. So, yeah, and we we see these usability problems with you know free security software like PGP, um, where the option for all this security exists, but it, it's just annoying enough. Even if it were really easy to use, because Threema does make things really easy, the act of converting is enough of a deterrent to most people that they just won't do it. They don't see the benefit of having a, an end-to-end -end encrypted uh, channel to communicate securely in. Um, hardly anyone cares when it comes to their, their messages. Uh, we do. If you're listening to this show, you probably do. But you know, everyone listening knows people or groups of people that they're not going to change the way they text message people. They're not going to uh, install Enigma and use an email client or, uh, or or any of the other browser add-ins to secure their messages. Um, so it's really about trying to make it as easy as possible for people, which I believe is a perfect segue into the next messenger we're talking about that just got a big boost earlier. Which is Signal, which we again, we've talked about this forever ago. And they were just another they were just another messaging system on top of a protocol called Open Whisper Systems, developed by uh, what I can't say his name, Mar uh, Moxy Marlin Spike. Yep. And I guess eventually the two parties talked. They 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 had some beers. They played around the golf, and they decided we should merge. So they merged, and with with Redphone, I think you said before, and now they have like this encrypted, secure messaging phone, all these different systems together that work together, and it's now available everywhere, or on, on the App Store and on Google Right. Um, you can, just like Hangouts, it will use a data connection if you want it to. It doesn't have to operate over text message. Uh, you can send files, you can take pictures, you can send audio clips, um, it, you can even you know send encrypted SMS messages to people, um, just like Text Secure used to do. Uh, it's you know, Moxie Marlin Spike is awesome. Uh, he, he's one of the big guys when it comes to security. Uh, and yeah, this takes a lot for me to say, but I implicitly trust anything Moxie puts out. Uh, he's a good guy. He is on the side of everything that's morally right. Uh, and mo most importantly, uh, he writes good software. Uh, Signal is incredibly easy to set up. That That setup was probably one of the easiest way easiest things I've ever done. Now, you know, a, a buddy of mine today did try to set it up and he said, you know, yeah, I, I clicked the send me a text message button so I could verify, uh, but it came through, you know, hours later. I guess their servers were getting hammered today with everyone jumping online. Uh, but it's it's easy to use. Uh, there's no key exchange. There's no anything. There, there is a security trade-off there, but it's 
it's a good enough trade off for usability that I don't mind wholeheartedly recommending it to people. It's truly a great piece of software. Well, Again, above the fold, you have four very familiar faces, Edward Snowden, Laura Petroyas, Bruce Schneier, and Matthew Green, who did the True Crypt audit, basically saying this is good. And then you go down and you see the people building it, with Moxie being number one and, and everything else. And with all that, these people don't just have their name attached without knowing. This. Right. <laughs> Because there's enough people saying, hey, did you really say that? Yeah, the, Edward Snowden doesn't just, uh, you know, stamp his name on everything. Uh, neither do the other people. You know, Bruce Schneier uh, quite literally wrote the book on encryption. Uh, if, if you want an encryption Bible, Bruce Schneier wrote that book. Uh, if he endorses something, you know it's going to be great. And... Most importantly, um, yeah, well, probably the second most important thing, other than being secure. Uh, this software is all completely open source. Uh, it's open source. It's on GitHub. You can see how they build it. They're, they're building it in public. They've got public issues. Uh, you can read the documentation. You could even, if you wanted to, make a build yourself to put on your phone. Uh, now, for those of you concerned with privacy who are running a custom ROM of Android without Google Apps, Signal will not work. It uses the Google messaging system on the back end, Google Play services, to ship messages back and forth on the data network. Uh, now, Google doesn't actually get any information from this because it's end-to-end -end encrypted, but it is one thing to keep in mind. You will have to have Google Apps in order to use Signal. Um, but it's open source and it's free. You can go out and download it right now. No cost, no barrier to entry, just go grab it. Well, they're using a system called Open Whisper Systems. By the way, I sent you a message on Signal, just testing it out. My problem was I installed it yesterday and, it, uh, and I was the only contact. And I'm like, did I miss the app permissions? Did I, what did I miss? Where are my contacts? So I checked all the app permissions, everything was there. And then I realized, oh, it's probably really too, it's probably too soon. So we, we go from there. But what I was going to say is that it uses open whisper systems as the back end, which uh, we talked about WhatsApp being the, also using uh, the, that as the back end. We recently found out that, yeah, while WhatsApp is pretty secure, the keyword there is pretty secure. It wasn't bulletproof. It wasn't this. It wasn't that. And and no one really did an audit of it and said, wow, this is great, other than it's using open whisper systems. So people tend to say, fine, use WhatsApp for whatever you want. But if you want to be secure, you really should, really should be doing something else. And I guess people are moving off from chat secure and tech secure. And tech secure now is Signal. So we recommend going to Signal. Absolutely. Uh, Chat Secure still exists. Uh, Signal has not replicated that functionality as of yet. Uh, if you're using it, um, you know, continue. It's not deprecated. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if Signal is sort of pulling in uh, other protocols to, you know, add on to its already impressive library. Uh, we did uh, just, and I, I heard it go off. Uh, I, we successfully yeah. sent an encrypted message. Um, now, this is a very important message, and I probably shouldn't be reading it on the air, uh, but my message was SUP and then a Space Invaders uh, emoji. So um, very secret stuff to be passing back and forth. But it makes the NSA's job harder, so I will happily send encrypted messages all day long. So, well, absolutely. Again, the problem, the underlying problem with all of this, we don't have a desktop client. So hopefully, hopefully the open whisper system peoples get on this and make a desktop client. But again, it's the it's the barrier to entry. I tell Tom all the time, I'm on a Chromebook most of the day. So if I want to talk, I either need to pull my phone out or I need to be on Google Hangouts. So you have to make a decision. Is the message that I'm sending that important that needs to be encrypted? Or do I just let it go and go on Hangouts? Because again, if it's encrypted, that stop that stops the immediate response right. and you're going to have this problem this is going to be the problem you know how, how do you get your encrypted messengers on all platforms and still make sure you're secure still make sure you're not leaking data in side channels or other things like that it's it's a really hard problem to solve uh not insurmountable i'm sure 
you know, someone or groups of people will figure this out uh, probably soon, but it is a, a big problem to figure it out. So, I mean, and we still talk about, again, how do you keep these things secure? Again, other than PGP, you have you have these options. We just gave you a couple. We gave you the paid one. We gave you the free one. Now it's your job. And I think Signal may be the one to go with because it will, it can, at least on Android, it can replace your your system SMS, but it still has that really nasty text message over Wi-Fi bug that hopefully they fixed, but it's still there. Basically, if you're you if you change your default SMS app from either Hangouts or Google Messenger to something else, if you're on Wi-Fi, MMS does not, it breaks MMS. So yes, they think they have a fix, it just doesn't work, at least for me. Your mileage may vary, but still, you'll get messages late, uh, days later, hours later. You're basically what we call the green bubble, and people don't like talking to you because they don't, they never get your messages and you never get theirs. That's why I really haven't looked at this and used it uh, really well, but I think I'm going to start again trying. Yeah, I, I'm trying to get more people on this. Um, you know, the the main issue, as it always is, is you know, for, for me, for my group of friends, everyone's on Android, no one has an iPhone. Uh, Hangouts is just everywhere, and it's so easy. Um, that's that's really the biggest barrier to entry is just getting people to migrate somewhere. I mean, you at least have that. I mean, I was talking, somebody on the air and somewhere said that he uses the $30 T-Mobile plan, but that only gives him 100 minutes. He goes, I don't really care because I use Google Hangout uh, phone calling for everything I said oh i wish i had that my, most of my people most of my friends are they're either iphone they have android without hangouts installed or they're people without phone like my like my mother she's never going to figure it out even though she can pick up when the baby calls when baby calls she picks that up everything else is i don't understand how to use technology so well keep in mind that hangouts can call real phone numbers they, yes, they did bake in the Google Now functionality. That's true. So, so, but again, it's you're paying for data, which for me doesn't matter. But you're getting when you pay for data, you're getting free voice at this point. So, right. So, we're, so it doesn't really matter, and we go from there. I want to just segue just a little bit. We got a question. Um, I don't know on one of the on, as a YouTube comment that we never mentioned Dashlane for the password management. So. And I think the reason we didn't mention it is because it's really expensive. It's, I mean, they say it's, it was, they said it was free, but I think I read it's like, like 60 bucks a year. So I don't necessarily have anything wrong with Dashlane. If you want another password system, Dashlane is definitely there, but it's, there was, there was, uh, there was definitely a cost associated with it, even though it says it's free. Probably an in-app purchase. Forty dollars a year. Forty dollars yeah. a year seems like a lot. Yeah, for I mean, compared to LastPass, it's twelve bucks a year for their premium. Um, that that cost is still pretty high. Uh, I I can't really speak to Dashlane. I haven't used it. Um, I haven't done a security review of it. Uh, I will say this: it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, it's. You know, LastPass only wishes it could look this good, uh, and KeePass couldn't even dream of it. But um, yeah, it's it looks pretty. <laughs> I wish I could speak to the security, uh, but I haven't used it yet, so um, Again, I, I might have to you, check it you out. Need and, pretty to get and, people to move, you know, but to get figure it out later, give it a yes or no. Uh, but yeah, definitely something to look into. It's, I mean, it's one of those, if you have the $40 a year, absolutely something to try out. But $40 a year is a lot. And and if you want to know what the difference between free and not free is, other than some priority supports, one of the big things here, web access to your passwords. LastPass does it after you prove who you are, you can see your passwords. So this means you have to have a device on you at all times to at least have access to it. But you know what? Maybe a security risk 
in and of itself to say web access well, that I, means somebody can win. If they're the using the internet to synchronize but these passwords the other thing anyway, is, I, I mean, d depending on what they're doing, if they're doing it correct and it's a true trust no one system, if they're not actually storing anything usable like LastPass does, like 1Password does, um, you know, a database breach wouldn't be tragic. But if they're storing stuff in a database, just like a standard web app with stuff in clear text, you know, a database breach, regardless of whether or not you have a premium account, could still leak all your passwords out. So, yeah, it, it, web access is absolutely huge. Uh, I don't know why you would limit that in your pro, uh, to, to your pro version. Well, because what they want is they say they want you to, if you segregate the way you use the web. So on the computer, I'm doing this, but really on mobile, I'm only, I'm only using social media on mobile. So I can remember those. I can remember those passwords. I don't know. It's it's something that I never understood where you say, well, well, we'll give you desktop access, but mobile you have to pay for. And it's like, well, I use the same websites on my mobile phone. I, I, I don't get it. But unlimited secure sharing the secure sharing on LastPass was awesome you can give people passwords without them seeing it so they have access like a like a shared bank account but they don't know the password so they really can't steal your money or you can, right i mean they can but they won't they don't have your they don't password easily have your and password, here you can only right? limit five but i mean it just it, yeah so again dash lane for forty dollars a year you're paying for for the beauty of it and assuming that it's doing everything right it's another option but like i said we're hoping that lastpass gets its act together and and uh they and log me and doesn't really rip rip everyone off like they don't mash it into their yeah. their their we, suite we of services that's hundred dollars a month yes so I mean, that's really it for the messengers, but there's other couple stories, and this is going on in the UK. Uh, in the UK, they're talking about a bill, I don't know what they want to call it in the UK, but internet firms to be banned from offering unbreakable encryption under new laws. Basically, if you're a company there and you develop software, somebody needs to get in. Right, this, and obviously uh, this law, are not if happy it passes, this. it's still a bill at this point, but if it, uh, if it gets signed into law, what this will mean is if you're a business in the UK, if you're a tech company, uh, you're not allowed to offer end-to-end uh, -end encryption, essentially. They, they did concede TLS. They said, okay, look, for websites, yeah, we get it. Uh, yeah, not allowing web hosting in the UK would probably be detrimental to the economy, so that gets a pass. But you know, anything that would allow the terrorists to communicate securely is simply not allowed. Well, if you're not allowing the terrorists to communicate secure, uh, securely, you're not allowing police officers, the military, uh, anyone else, financial institutions. You know, what, when it comes down to secure messaging, uh, by protecting us from the terrorists, you really uh, destroy the security of everyone else. And you know, let's let's remember the the great a fantastic logical leap that has to happen for someone to say, hmm, for criminals that operate outside the law, what can we do to defend against what they do? I know, we'll make a law. The terrorists are going to use PGP. You can't stop that. They're going to use encrypted systems. They're going to use Tor. Just because you make it illegal doesn't stop bad people from doing it. Um, it only hurts you and the private citizens, which you then criminalize. Look, they're going to come up with their own new encryption. If you ban, we tried this. We, we tried this in the states uh, back in Netscape with SSL version one. We had the export ciphers because here's a quick history lesson. Back in the day, um, <laughs> it's all good. Back in the day. Uh, encryption Sorry. used to be classified as a military munition, uh, which harkens back to the World War II era of the Enigma machine, when encryption was this new fancy thing that uh, governments and uh, 
and militaries <laughs> pay big money to smart mathematicians to come up with. Um, what Netscape had to do is I said, okay, look, we're going to have legitimate ciphers, right? We're going to have 128-bit keys for SSL. In the States, if you connect to a server outside of the United States, because of the current law, we can't use 128-bit keys. We have to limit it to 40-bit because 40-bit keys are not, uh, they, they don't uh, conflict with the munitions law at the time. Uh, <laughs> some recent fantastic SSL downgrade attacks today uh, are because those keys are still in use. Uh, because the U.S. was short-sighted, because we still classified encryption as ammunition, uh, you know, uh, in the beginning of the Internet era, we now caused major, major, major problems for us down the road, and the U.K. is heading down the exact same path. This will only hurt them. This will only cause issues. And really, if you're a tech company in the U.K. and you have anything to do with security, you're incorporating somewhere else right now or at least after it becomes law, which not guaranteed, but we'll see. I was thinking about that. So Apple, but Apple is located in one infinite loop in Cupertino. We don't know if they're going to have to provide it because they're doing business right. in, in the UK. We don't know about that. Well, this is, this is what famously happened to BlackBerry. All the companies said BBM, you have to give us a way to decrypt their, their information. And they basically went from bulletproof to not bulletproof in a matter of, I don't know, a couple of days or a couple of months. And yeah. that's those things. Uh, Skype was the same way. Skype, right before they sold to Microsoft, got rid of their decentralized nature so they could comply with law enforcement. Uh, and it utterly destroyed the security of the product. Skype today... Um, you know, if you're using Skype, be rest assured that anything and everything you say or do is logged, scanned, and filtered by law enforcement. Uh, it's just I, awful. I mean, again, everyone pulls on, on the heartstrings and they say, well, we're trying to prevent child abductors, we're trying to prevent terrorists. If you're not one of those, then what do you need encryption for? I mean, everyone who's using encryption is clearly one of those two categories of people. And for the people who don't know, say, no, absolutely, I I, I, I don't want to be one of those people. Yes, only bad people use encryption because they're hiding things. You know, and that's not how it works. Privacy exists for a reason. You know, I, I don't flash my my credit card on camera or, or post the numbers on Twitter like some people do um, because some things should be private some things I say to people should be private whether it's business conversations or personal conversations because I want that encrypted that doesn't mean I'm a bad person it just means you know I like my privacy and I like protecting it with mathematics I like protecting it with science I mean I'm just while you were talking I was thinking as a correlation this is like and, and I'm going to be wrong, but this is almost like the gun debate. People are saying, why do you need guns? Guns are only bad things. And then on the other side, you have the people who say, what's wrong with guns? It's actually, it's you know actually a pretty use. apt analogy. Um, you know, not that encryption is offensive instead of defensive. I guess guns could be defensive, depending on how you're thinking about it. Um, but, you know, there, there are people in the world that say, well, we should ban all guns. And someone says, well, the criminals will have guns because by definition they're criminals and they don't listen to the law. And someone says, well, there will be less guns. Well, who does that stop? The criminals still have guns, right? Unbreakable encryption mathematically as of this moment in time today, pending any, uh, you know, cryptanalysis attacks that are found in the future, uh, in unbreakable encryption as of this moment exists, right? We use it. We use it all the time. We use it every day. Every time you connect to an HTTPS website, you are using a form of, you know, mathematically hardened crypto. Banning that is ludicrous, is absolutely ridiculous. It makes no logical sense whatsoever. How do you undo that which is already done, right? After you let the genie out of the bottle, there's no way to stuff it back in. If you make it illegal, it just creates a black market. That's it. If, if you outlaw, you know, PGP, 
<laughs> you, I, I'm not saying you'll see guys on the street in the UK selling, you know, floppy disks of PGP, but I'm not saying that's entirely impossible. Uh, there, there will be websites, you know, dedicated to spreading crypto around the area where it's banned, just like in China today. Well, you have the hacking team, which is a story that's inside security here. But you have hacking team basically saying, hey, law enforcement, we got more stuff for you. And we're coming back ready to go with all these zero days. We talked about it. We said they were they were they were using all these different things that no one knew about. So stuff like this does happen. And if you give people the ability to do it, even if they're not allowed yeah. to do it, they're still going to do it. You give law enforcement the ability, other people are gonna find it. Anyway, we have to wrap up. So we have another news filled episode. Hopefully it's better news next time. So anyway, everyone, we will see you 